The day you said it's over, I thought I would lose my mind. But that was many tears ago, and now I'm doing fine. In fact, I hardly ever think about you since you're gone. Except when I'm with someone else, or when I'm all alone. I've been feeling a little distant and uneasy since the pandemic began. And then I came across these sheep. Schaefer Vineyards brings the sheep in every spring to mow the crop cover that grows in their vine rows. This year, when the Napa Winery posted a YouTube video of the sheep, it was viewed by hundreds of thousands of people sequestered at home due to the pandemic. Organizations currently off limits to the public are posting similar online videos and creating virtual experiences. Hi. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm doing great. Uh, I'm so let me just, I'll flip you around so you can see what it all looks like. Oh, I've arranged for a virtual tour with the founder of Charlie's Acres Farm Animal Sanctuary, Tracy Vogt. Yeah. Her colleague and digital collaborator, Kaylee Rhodes, will be doing the filming today. I'm usually the one filming, so not holding the camera takes some getting used to, but I know I'm in good hands. You guys are the pros of this now, so yeah. <laughs> and I'll defer to you. So this is Petunia. She is a Gottingen pig and she is was used for laboratory testing so she we got her when she was about a year old and she actually walked on grass for the first time in her life after she came to charlie's acres so we were reached out to by another rescue who goes into labs and tries to um, convince them to release some of their animals and so we were able to take in Petunia and they released her to us. And she, we don't know what she was being used for with testing. She came to us with a lot of scabs on her body, um, but she was very uh, happy to be outside. And right now she's laying here, she's resting. She's <laughs> actually just being a full pig. She's got a muddy bottom. She's been in the mud and rolling around and now she's taking her afternoon nap, which all pigs would love to do out here in the sun. Well, she looks very relaxed. <laughs> yeah. Let's lead it off with how this began. Why did you create Charlie's Acres? How did it get started and, and what was the idea behind it? I started Charlie's Acres in 2016. I really wanted to start a sanctuary for farmed animals because they're one of the most underserved animal populations. There are billions of farm animals in the world and they often don't have a voice. And so by starting a sanctuary for them, I hoped to be able to provide education to people so that they could come and learn about how incredible all these animals are and also to be able to rescue some of them that were kind of right in harm's way. So I'm sitting here with Peppa and Tofu, who are two of our friendliest pigs, and they're really sweet. And it's been really cool to uh, have people see how much like dogs and cats and our other pets these farm animals are and just how much they want to be loved and have a lot of attention. Why should we be caring about animals in this way and, and kind of the issues that these different animals have gone through when there's this bigger looming crisis? On a public health level, I mean, we're going through a pandemic right now that is likely related to animals and um, our use of them. And I think we need to be a lot more careful and really looking at the source of where our food is coming from and how it's being processed. And then from, you know, an environmental level, we need to be more conscientious about the effects that animal agriculture is having on the environment. And 
you know, the mass produced meat in factory farms and the amount of water it takes to raise a cow, to raise a pig, when we could be putting that towards, uh, towards plant-based foods that could feed more people. Charlie's Acres cares for 140 animals on 32 acres. The nonprofit has been growing steadily over the last few years. How is this current situation affecting your ability to keep your operations going? You know, we were doing in-person tours prior to this, and so that was really how we were getting a lot of donations and people interested in sponsoring our animals. And without having that in-person connection, it's very difficult to keep us going as well and keep income coming into the sanctuary. But we've pivoted to doing virtual experiences where we're doing go-to meetings as one of the options where people can um, actually pay a, a little bit of money and donate to us and book 10 minutes or 20 minutes or 25 minutes with our animals. And uh, Marianne is a star of our go-to meetings. Virtual guests from around the world have booked times with the sanctuary's animals. This is Honey. She's about Doctors meeting to discuss coronavirus treatments. Lovers sharing a date. Children during bedtime story hour. Action. So this is Marianne and this is Louie because oftentimes mothers, dairy cows, are not able to keep their babies, especially boy babies. The time goes by quickly. Thanks again, I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. It's so nice to have you on this and I'm excited to see what comes out of this. Yeah, me too. Well, good luck with the next tour. <laughs> thank you. Okay, bye. Okay, bye-bye. My friends can't get over how I took it all so well. And they don't worry now since I quit talking to myself. Now the only time I ever think about our last goodbye Are months that start out on the first And days that end in Y My next virtual stop is Safari West Where I'll be talking with the African Wildlife Preserve's new filmmaker, Nate Woodward Hi Nate! <laughs> How's it going? Good! Nice to see you! <laughs> So I'm mic'd up here to my camera over this way, but I've got you in my ear here. Okay, yeah, it's always it's always yeah. good to record it. <laughs> yeah. Can you hear me all right? Oh, I can hear you great. Yeah. Awesome. You've yeah. gotten quite comfortable filming these flamingos, I suppose. I have. I've been over here more than a couple of times, but it, it's a beautiful spot. Officially on paper, I'm our guest services manager, but without any guests around, I've taken on kind of a new role here, which is content creator, kind of, uh, making videos to send out to people. Uh, this is usually our busiest time of year right now, right around spring break, uh, when the grass is green. Uh, Springtime for an animal reserve means that a lot of our species are having babies right now. Uh, in fact, there's some little baby flamingos out on the pond behind me right here. Uh, some that I think might have hatched just yesterday. With everything shut down, it's a totally different scene here. We want to put ourselves out there and remind people that we're still here and we're still excited to see them once this is all over. Uh, but beyond that, uh, it comes from a sympathetic place. We know most people are stuck at home. We know most people are itching to get out of their homes. We know most people are itching to travel again. Uh, and while we can't necessarily send them on a vacation, we can try to make their home feel a little bit more like a vacation by inviting them in virtually with the content we're making here. I have to correct you on one thing you just said. Uh... You aren't sort of a content creator, you are a content creator. <laughs> well, thank you. Um, it's, it's funny calling myself that because it's relatively new for me, but that is what I've been doing and I've been loving it so far. They must be hearing us because I, it sounds like they're getting a little louder right now. 
They might be. I don't know. When, when babies are around, the whole flamingo pond tends to be a little noisier. Uh, no moms want the other flamingos too close to their babies, and so everybody's a little bit chattier. Uh, and we have a thousand animals. We are 400 acres. We have plenty of mouths to feed, and this brilliant team of caretakers we have is getting it all done every day to the best of their abilities, so much so that we've been accredited by a lot of bodies that only really accredit those who give a gold standard of animal care and that's something we're really proud of here so I love creating content and that's part of the reason why I started down this path but a big part of it was too that I wanted people to recognize the hard work that some of our staff behind the scenes are getting to do and this shutdown has provided a unique opportunity to do so among his projects Nate has been filming a weekly show with Safari West owner Peter Lang Peter and his wife Nancy founded the preserve over 25 years ago. Peter stayed to take care of the animals, even when the tub's wildfire burned through the area in 2017. They have no plans to abandon the animals now. It sounds like in words and deeds they're very committed to the animals and the conservation ideal. Can you talk a little more about the way conservation fits into the equation? Cheetah are disappearing, giraffe are disappearing. Uh, a lot of these animals are threatened and it's hard for those of us that are on this half of the world to maybe understand why that might be so important without being up close in front of one of these animals themselves. Of course, if you ask someone, would it be sad if giraffe went extinct? They're gonna say yes, because it would be sad if giraffe went extinct. But to get an impassioned response from someone that might encourage them to support the animal's conservation themselves, if you are standing on the ground, staring straight up at 18 feet of giraffe, you're gonna be breathless. It's, it's an amazing experience, and something like that really encourages people to at least make themselves aware of the status of these animals in the wild. It's not just creating wildlife advocates, it's creating educated wildlife advocates, which is so important. I have loved myself having the opportunity to, in some form or other, see these wonderful animals behind you. Yeah, bringing a little safari to you today. Well, I'm definitely looking forward to when it's possible to meeting you in person and seeing Safari West. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it too. Life feels a lot more precious right now. I still feel uneasy. But seeing these animals and connecting with their caretakers, I feel a lot less distant.